Welcome, everybody. This is the first episode Hello. of Hello, It Resolves. Greetings. This is a Magic the Gathering yeah. podcast. Uh, something like it. Something like that. It My is. name is Kevin. I'm Will. Uh, we're here to hopefully make magic more accessible to everybody. Yeah. We make, think this is a great game. Make magic a little less scary yeah. to new players, a little less uh, obtuse, maybe. There you go. You Good say. word. $5 Good word. word for, uh, <laughs> I don't want to touch that. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. So we thought we'd start off mm-hmm. uh, with a little uh, intro about ourselves. So Will, okay. go right ahead. Sure. So um, Will, I'm a young guy, you know, <laughs> just looking for love. Uh, no, we're we're kidding, kidding. I'm married. He's um, married. Yeah, very much, very much so. Um, but yeah, I'm very much married. of the two of us. I'm the newest, quote unquote, to Magic. I've been playing it for uh, probably four or five years, ish, um, on and off. I don't have as much. I don't want to say dedication, but um, <laughs> I am not as uh, finger on the pulse as Kevin. Kevin is an encyclopedia of Magic. Uh, well. He's made me. We're a going a little player. far here. Well, well, still, still. still. <laughs> but um, I love the game. Um, I started with a uh, black white exalted deck that I tried to brew myself and make really fancy. Perfect. Um, and it was just, it was fun. I lost a lot, learned a lot, um, <laughs> but it, it gave me an opportunity to be creative, analytical, and compete, uh, which I think is one of the biggest draws to Magic for uh, people like us. Perfect. Yeah. A perfect intro by a very a very nice young man. A uh, bowing. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for that. My name is Kevin. Um, I I would not claim to be an encyclopedia of wow. magic, but I do I do enjoy the game. I've been playing yeah. roughly twelve ish years. Mm-hmm. Um, I started with an, a seventh edition intro pack. Yeah, I don't for even, Christmas. I don't know if I've seen a seventh edition card. It was it was awesome. No wait, Thorn of Elementals. Is there you one? go. Thorn Elemental. That's yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Great 7-7 seven, seven vanilla creature. Absolutely. Fantastic set. Uh, I love it still. But uh, I've been playing on and off since then. I, I started, had no clue how to play, eventually sort of fleshed out the rules on how to actually play by myself and mm-hmm. got a few friends that played and we sort of, we sort of tampered around with it. Yeah. I started in a blue-black mill deck. Yeah, that's uh, just... Yes. Which is absolutely still my favorite strategy, even though it is not very viable all well, the time. Look, your favorites don't have, and that's something that I, I always love, your favorites don't have to be the best. And that's the beauty about Magic. You yeah. can play what you want, mm-hmm. doesn't matter, it's it's just about having fun. Your first so, question should be, do you like to win? Well. And then, what yeah. do you want to play? <laughs> what do you want to play? So, a little bit about us. Uh, I think we're going to get started with... Just talking about why we're here, and yeah. I, I think we already touched on it. We want to make this accessible. Right. We want to make this fun for for new people or people who are just starting out and right. maybe think it's a bit daunting. Yeah, right. Because um, it, it can be. I think absolutely. I, I think back to when I first started. Mm-hmm. Um, the few friends I had played, we, um, you know, like you said, we kind of figured some things out on our own until we dipped into all the resources that exist out there, and there are sure. some, some great ones. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is a very, uh, it can seem unapproachable if you've not got, like, an in. Absolutely. Um, there's Absolutely. all these rules and, and, and interactions and strategies that, and you would never, like, want to cast this card in this way. That's <laughs> absurd. You know, there's all sorts of things to figure out that you might not know if you don't have someone. Absolutely. You know? Not that, you know, we will be that person for you, per se. Well, we're going to try and be. Well, yeah. We're going to try and be. We are so. friendly neighborhood magic players. Perfect. A perfect description. <laughs> Casual tryhards. So so we really are, we're here to sort of give a rundown of magic, talk about our, the things that we want to talk about, which we've got a little bit of a list here. Um, we're just going to start off. This is because it's our intro episode. Mm-hmm. We didn't want to get into anything too heavy. No, nothing in so, the weeds. So I think what we're going to do, run through a few things that we just find interesting Absolutely. and that you'll see in future episodes. Sure. Um, I'll throw one out there. Something that interests me is what makes a good card and what makes a card better than other cards. So Magic's been around since, I think, 94? 93. 93. Mm -hmm. I stand corrected. Was when Alpha was released. Man. I was not. And I was born. I was not born yet. I was a 94 baby. Oh. 94. (laughs) That's when uh, uh, Illmatic came out. Nos. Perfect. Nos. It's a a great album. (laughs) Is it? (laughs) <laughs> anyway, uh, 
So 90, uh, 93, excuse me, there are thousands of cards. Oh, absolutely. Tens and of thousands. Absolutely. There are effects that repeat. There are cards that do some of the same thing. There are cards that get reprinted. Uh, th- something that's always interested me and confused me and lost me plenty of games are figuring <laughs> out what is a good card, what is a bad card, what's a way I can make this card work better. Things okay. like that. You yeah. know what I mean? Better draw spells, better counter spells, and X, absolutely y, absolutely and i think that's that's a good uh a, a really good topic because you do see cards a lot of mm-hmm. times and you think wow this is a powerful ability yeah or but... maybe this is this is a vi- of an, a, an ability that you could play in a lot of decks mm-hmm. but there's so much more to it that you have to consider mana yeah. cost you know is it actually good in this format because that's, that's... a big thing too and i think yeah. that says a lot i mean a card that's good in standard doesn't mean that it's going to be the same as far as you know modern or legacy or anything like that you know you get into different formats different power levels so Mm -hmm. definitely uh something that i think will will be a very large topic for us is what does make a good or a bad magic card absolutely and and when is it considered good um something i'd like to talk about uh longevity of cards Mm. uh how how well does this card hold up yeah how long will we still play in this format, in that format? Sure. Are there cards that do it better? I mean, that kind of relates to uh, the first topic a little bit, but uh, we just want to see, will this card hold value? Absolutely. Does it Does it work? Absolutely. And I think, um, you know, that's something you can get into sort of some speculation on, you know, yeah. pricing and stuff like that. But I don't know if we'll touch on that quite so much. Just... Is it a playable card? How yeah. long is it going to be a playable card? For sure. With new sets rotating out, I think standard is the place where this really becomes sort of the mm-hmm. biggest topic. Absolutely. Because, you know, with sets coming in, do the decks that are already there sort of hold up the same way? Yeah. Or is there something new that's coming in that's going to break those decks? You know what I mean? Absolutely. So I, I think that's definitely going to be an interesting topic as well. Definitely. Definitely is. Um, and simply, I guess to close, what makes magic fun? A why perfect we, question. Why do we play this, yeah. this silly little game with, <laughs> with cards and dice and monsters and Absolutely. magic and what have you, and dingus eggs and all And this. dingus eggs, uh, which is just the best card. My personal mascot. Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you for showing me dingus egg. It's I beautiful. do what I can. Um a beautiful card. Oh, Alpha. Oh, Alpha. <laughs> um, uh, no, you, you're exactly right. What does make magic fun? Mm-hmm. Why? And I think that the answer for that is going to be different for everybody and i think that's that's the beauty of magic is that it appeals or it could appeal to so many people i agree and i I think that's fantastic if you were a if you're a guy or a girl who likes to you know take a weekend trip and go to an event magic has plenty um absolutely dozens each year um all over the place and that's even that's just you know grand prix and, yeah. and pro tours but we're talking even on the weekends every friday your local game store is How gonna have a friday have, night night magic yeah, i can't mean right out fnm that's, exactly that's where that's where the, the start show. is yeah you know and it's it's a really great way i have to i'm i'm a bit ashamed to admit this you can say it. We're, this is a safe place i hope so <laughs> but i'm a bit ashamed in that i have never in my 12 years of playing, mm-hmm. and this is where you have a little more experience than I true, do. True. I've never been to an FNM or a tournament of any kind. Yeah. Um, I've hosted cubes. Many that's, cubes. That's my, that's my comfort zone. I love yes. building cubes, which cubes will be a topic I'm sure that Absolutely. we touch on. We, we both love cubes um, very much. I have a legacy cube that I love. <laughs> and it's excellent. It's a very fun cube. We've got a group that plays together. Yeah. Um, and that's that's my comfort zone. I've I've never sure. been to the tournament or sure. to the F and M or anything like that. You know, in that in that in that vein, just mm-hmm. a little question, a little more about yourself. What uh, candidly, what is your favorite format? Just throw oh it there. oh okay, great question. Let's talk about cubes, but what's your my yeah? It, aside from cube, I would right. definitely say legacy. Legacy mm-hmm. is a beautiful format, and for those of you who don't know, it's an eternal format. Yep, it's got a small ban list. Um, banning some yeah. of the most powerful cards yeah. but yeah, get well reason. well you know no that's that's modern <laughs> oh excuse that's me. just modern is it just modern i believe so huh okay well i again stink that's okay didn't they restrict it the they last? they might have restricted it that might have happened either way the hate for we'll Gitaxi look at it the hate real. for get taxi and probe is real but 
Legacy is a great format, and mm -hmm. it, it's so great because, one, you get access to so many cards. The card pool is great. It's gigantic, yeah. That being said, there are the standard tier one decks, mm -hmm. but the interactions are what Legacy is really about. Yeah, it's get, it's so complex. They get so funky. The line of play is not always clear, and I mm -hmm. love trying to figure out that line of play. When I when I do watch, I do watch the, the pro mm -hmm. Legacy tournaments pretty regularly. I think it's so interesting, the interactions that happen, what you have to think about all the time, and, you know, really getting in the opponent's head on what what am I holding? You know, yeah. you have no idea, so you have to play around that as well. So Absolutely. a lot of respect for, for players that can play Legacy Definitely. very well because it is very, very intensive. It is hard. It's, Absolutely. Uh, I'm accredited to playing chess and magic at the same time, <laughs> um, which is no easy task. Not at all. Uh-uh. Um, it's fantastic. It's really fun though. It is challenging. It yeah. stretches your your brain box. You just get those fun cards, those um, great cards. Yeah. What about you? What's your favorite? So, my favorite format would have to be Popper. Whoa. Which is a weird one. Other end of the spectrum. I, I know. I know. It's the uh, pretty much. Yeah, that's, <laughs> as, that's as polar as you can get, really. Uh, Popper is great to me because I'm a guy uh, who really likes to stretch a card to its max. Sure. Is it good? I'm going to find value in anything yeah. if I can, um, which is a, a flaw <laughs> when I brew decks. Um, but it, it's found me in some interesting circumstances. Well, absolutely. Uh, but Popper is a really fun and accessible format that really anybody can play. If you've ever opened five packs, you have the bones of a Popper deck maybe. Right sure, there. yeah. Uh, so Popper you play, if you don't know, if you're unaware of Popper, uh, you play Popper with only commons. No uncommons, no rares, no mythics, nothing. Just commons. Um, and you have to build your deck to have stars in the common rarity, which mm -hmm. is challenging. You can, there's really no other format that you can find a common that's playable. As yeah, well, often. I, I'd be careful saying that, but oh. you're right. I mean, generally speaking, you look at deck lists, and it's a bunch of rares, yeah. mythics. It's it's the yeah. pricey stuff, right? Of course, yeah, and, yeah. The, the great thing about Popper is that, as you touched on, it is so accessible Absolutely. because, you know, your most expensive cards might be a dollar or two yeah, at really. most. You can build a winning Popper deck, I'd say, top end, mm -hmm. 50 bucks, 60 bucks. Sure, something absolutely. Like that. It's, yeah. a, it's a really great format. You do get a lot of really cool value stuff mm -hmm. at that common level. And, and what you sort of think about is, you know, if you, you look at a format like Legacy, you have the accessibility of cards there is huge and you get some cards that are clearly down at a low sort of power level yeah and then the exceedingly high power level Over which creates thousand. these sort of large peaks yeah right and so you look for the cards at the peaks but when you're in popper that peak is lowered oh, pretty that. tremendously because oh, yeah. everything's at common rarity so everything is generally closer together on the power level yeah and so when when you do pull cards for that you you actually get some accessibility that's not mm -hmm. there in other formats which i think is great yeah. and fun mobility a lot of cards. absolutely really fun it also stems a lot of blocks a lot of sets mm -hmm. so you can use things together that never got to meet never got to that's hang a out. great way to look at it yeah absolutely yeah um, very cool great okay so that's a little intro about us what we want to talk about what interests us in magic uh if that makes you curious about anything <laughs> about back. literally anything if you if you like magic we're hoping that this will be something you enjoy yeah. um it's definitely something we're gonna love doing yeah. I, we've practiced a few times and loved it many um, many, many a time and uh i think we're gonna move into our our final segment for this episode but our mm -hmm. first round of this mm -hmm. um it's a crack a pack crack -a with pack. a bit of a twist right yeah. because Everybody does crack a packs. We want to set a goal for our crack a pack. Yeah, I want I want some out. I yes. want some I can hang on my wall and say, "Look at this." Perfect. So, what we decided to do, we have the new Amonkhet set here. Brand new. Uh, Will and I both have bought a fat pack. Yep, minted. Uh, so ten so packs, packs, ten brand new packs. We're really excited. I don't think either of us have opened Amonkhet. Uh, I have not, not yet. So this not is the first time. time for us. So, yeah. what we've done is we've each gone through the card list mm -hmm. and picked a card that we want to find in these packs. And there are so many in this set. Oh, absolutely. The there are some powerhouse cards in this set. It's a really fun set. Absolutely. So what we've decided to do is until we find that card, we are going to open Amonkhet packs every yep. episode until we get the cards we want. And we've each set oh, individual God, goals. God. Yep. Will, what's your goal? My goal, um, he is a... Uh, 
what is he? A 2 2 for 3. Neheb the Worthy. Uh, a very cool Minotaur. It's super cool. Now, this isn't going to be something that, in my opinion, just a little, little speculation. Sure, color. sure. It's not going to see a bunch of play in your constructed, uh, like, standard tournaments, you know? Yeah. I doubt someone's going to pull out at a Grand Prix unless, you know, Minotaur <laughs> Tribal just becomes a thing. Uh, <laughs> but I love tribal decks because oftentimes they're, you know, mid tier, except for. Uh, yeah, yeah. Whatever, but that's another. <laughs> uh, no but they're just fun to make. Absolutely. Man. They're super cool. Yeah. I think the classic funny joke that we have, uh, uh, yeah. Will, what is the best tribal deck you've ever made? The best tribal deck? <laughs> uh, the most interesting. Ah. Maybe not the best. That's a great question. Um, <laughs> so every set has about two or three griffins uh -oh. in it. Yeah. Uh, so I uh, <laughs> got my shoeboxes of magic cards, and I said, uh, what if I made a griffin tribal deck? Griffin Tribal. Griffin Tribal. It's um, going to be great. I bet it was amazing. Well, uh, amazing, maybe like um, like a train wreck. <laughs> like a distant explosion. Okay, okay. It um, it loses to about 100% of anything it plays. Sure. Uh, so working on getting that win rate a little bit higher. A little bit. That's okay. Um, it's about O for everything. Yeah. So... Well, that's okay. You got to work at it. Um, it's a brew. It's a brew. I'm not it's saying the I'm, start. I'm not saying I'm still doing it. <laughs> I tried. I tried. All right. So <laughs> you are going for Neheb. Yep. Um, I'm going to shoot for a very cool card, I think. Mm. Um, as foretold. Oh, yeah. I it love it. It is two and a blue for an enchantment. Sweet. It states at the beginning of your upkeep, you put a time counter on as mm. foretold. And then once each turn, you may pay zero rather than pay the mana cost of a spell with converted mana cost X or less. Mm -hmm. where X is the number of time counters on as foretold. So essentially, the goal, the, the, the prime goal of this, of this card is to get a free card every, every turn. Yeah, it's going to be great. max value it's, if you can. It is a very cool card. There's a lot of cool interactions you can probably get out of this. Oh, totally. A little bit of speculation on my end. I think it's going to be a, a pretty cool card. So I think, yeah, if you can find a way uh, that people don't want to blow it up instantly, sure. you know, you can play it. Um, exactly. So it's, so it's like uh, omniscience. Is omniscience an enchantment or is it a sorcery? Uh, sorcery? Yeah, I think you Maybe. cast it and then you just yeah. get a turn of free stuff. I believe so. So I think what we'll do, we're each going to open a pack. Hopefully we'll get our cards out of these. We've got 10 packs each, so we'll see. If not, we will continue to open packs until we get these. Yeah, uh, I'm going to open it down here so it doesn't crackle your sure. ears off. Sure, sure. It still might. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and why don't you start us off and let, well, sure. okay. let us know if you get yours. Hello. Uh, so we're looking at... Ooh, zombie token. That's my rare. Oh, yes. Uh, Heart Piercer Manticore is my rare. Not uh, oh. not my guy, but what do you do? Uh, ooh, okay. So it's kind of a, a Gerard, like, flame card. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, I can sacrifice another creature. And then Heart Piercer Manticore deals damage to that creature's power to target creature or player. Very cool. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Not bad. Okay, yeah. so my first pack, I got the Red Black Dual Land. Oh, hey, look at um, that. Very cool. If you don't know, the new the new great interaction here is that they do actually count as as the basic land yes. types. So, so that's huge. They are fetchable in, <laughs> in formats like Modern or even Frontier. Yeah. Um, Hitting your lands is, very I've cool. heard, always good. Usually it is. You want so, your mana. Weird how that works. Very cool card. Uh, not what we're looking for, but I do like it. Alright. I've got number two. Uh, What'd you get here? Uh, oh. No mythic. Uh, okay. Hazard the Fervent. Oh, it's the god. It's the red god. Indestructible case. Perfect. Not bad. Um, can't attack or block unless I have one or fewer cards in hand. Um, it's mana abilities, discard a card, and it deals two damage to each opponent. So this, off the bat, I'm thinking Reanimator. Rakdos Reanimator sure. could go into that. Uh, that's for four. That's some good value. It's not. That's very in good, that, absolutely. In that deck, I'd say. And I think it's fair to say these new gods are pretty awesome. They are, man. They're I, pretty awesome. I love the gods in... Um, help me out. Theros. In Theros, Theros. They yep. were so cool. The they were really, really cool. was delicious. Uh, and anytime you print a god, like that just comes with so much uh, yeah. you, you know, stigma. <laughs> What'd you get? I got in my second plaque 
pack, excuse me, not plaque, glory bringer, Ooh, which is you. the 4-4 four, four for 5 dragon with flying and haste. Hmm. I can exert it as it attacks, and when I do, it deals 4 damage to target non-dragon creature and opponent controls. So, great card, yeah. right? I mean, this not is bad. fantastic, and especially in limited, it's a great bomb in red. Yeah. Um, it, it shoots a creature if you'd like to exert it, and it also usually will punch through for some damage. So, yeah. great. And it that has haste. Strong. So Red seems really uh, up in your face. Absolutely. In Very cool. So, oh, that's a foil. You are not what I want. So you... <laughs> I got commit and memory. Oh. Put target spell or non-land permanent into its owner's library. Second from the top is commit memory. Each player shuffles his or her hand. And graveyard into his or her library, then draw seven cards. Huh. Very cool. Interesting. Interesting. A very cool card. Uh, yeah, blue is perplexing to me in that I see something and don't know how to use it right off. Yeah. But that seems like I could see some play. Yeah, absolutely. I um, I got one of my favorite cards in the set. Talk to me. Uh, the reason it's one of my favorite cards is because uh -huh. it is a cat. <laughs> um, and as we all know... Cats are basically just the best things in the world, right? Open I mean, for debate. Uh, no. Uh, proceed. The, the card I got is Regal Carousel. Am I saying that correctly? Uh, Caracal? Caracal. Caracal. I, um, I have, yes. It Regal is a 3-3 three, three for 5. Uh, 2 white and 3 colorless. Other cats you control get plus 1, plus 1 and have a lifelink. Uh, so it buffs all the other cats. And when it cat enters tribal. the battlefield... Yeah, Cat Tribal is now a thing. Uh, enters the battlefield, you create two 1-1 one, one white creature tokens with lifelink. Are they cat tokens too? They are cat tokens, so, so they get the buff. So instantly, for five, you get a 3-3 three, three, and two, 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 two twos, twos with lifelink. Holy crap. It is great. And if, so he, they both have lifelink, so Absolutely. even if Regal leaves. Yep, they hold on to it. That is punchy. It is a fantastic card. Wow. I'm, I really do I'm enjoy that card. little kitty cat. <laughs> uh, next one, I have cut... And ribbons. All the that aftermath. That deals four damage to target creature. And ribbons is each opponent loses X life. Uh, and it's a uh, that one's a two two for X. Ribbons is mm -hmm. rather. Man, that is nasty. Yeah. That's mean. Classic black rub. All right, my next one is sweltering suns. It's one and two red. Deals three damage to each creature. Mm -hmm. And it has cycling for three colorless. And the obvious comparison is uh, with Anger of the Gods from Theros. Uh, it's basically the same, except yeah. these can be regenerated. So the, ah. the question becomes, do you want the cycling or the regeneration The regeneration hit? So question. this is a fairly good card, I think. It's a great little sweeper. It's fantastic. I know Anger of the Gods sees some play in some other Eternal formats, mm -hmm. so does this replace it? I don't think it does. I don't you think know? it always replaces it. I think there are situations where you may have one of each or, you know, some sort of... I think the cycling adds it a little... It gives it more options. I think it makes it more main deckable. Yeah, that's a, that's a good way Because even yes. if you're up against a deck where this does not hit, mm. you can still cycle it, even in those situations, and it's still... It's not a dead card, right? Like, you get a True. draw out of it. So... Very cool card. I like it quite a lot. Awesome. All right, so what does Will have? He's got rags and riches. All creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn for two black, two colorless riches. Uh, for two blue, five colorless, each opponent chooses a creature he or she controls. You gain control of those creatures. Hello. Wow. Commander, I'm calling you. <laughs> That's nuts. That's great. That's yeah, really great. In a that's a cube card, I think, sir. You think so? Absolutely. Uh, All right. Pick a thing that I can have. Give it to me, please. <laughs> For seven, seven is high, but in big group formats, yeah, um, you get to seven honestly fairly quickly. Oh sure. And sure. commander. And commander ramp. especially you ramp. Yeah. So a great card. That's fun. My yeah, next. What you got over there? My next one is Oracle's Vault. It's a forecast artifact. For two, I can tap it. Exile the top card of my library until end of turn. I may play that card, and I can put a brick counter on Oracle's Vault. A brick counter? A brick counter. Oh, Correct. Fun counters. I can also tap it, exile the top card of my library until the end of the turn. You may play that card without paying its mana cost. Activate this ability only if there are three or more brick counters on the on the vault. So, 
not the best, I would say. It's a cool card. Yeah. But um, it's it takes some setup. You know what it reminds me of? Uh, Trader's Outpost? Or Absolutely. Whatever yeah. Um, I know exactly what from, you're talking about. If I'm not mistaken, that's Ravnica. I think you're right. Um, where it's got, you know, make a goat token, sacrifice a goat token, yeah. draw this and do this. Uh, it was fun. But, but not great. No. In limited, probably its strongest. Yeah. But, but even not. then, hey, the setup do is you. just so slow. Yeah. I think there's better cards. So. Yes. All right. Next, I have another of these. Uh, you are s- cards. so many of these after my cards. Uh, heaven and Earth. Heaven deals wow. X damage to each creature with flying. Earth Earth deals X damage to each creature without flying. Very cool. You know, you what say you that. Mm-hmm. I don't love it. Um, okay. You know, with green, not having flying, hates flying, all that stuff, I get it. Mm-hmm. I think it's kind of gimmicky. Um, okay. I think Earth is definitely the best card in this, like, combination yeah, absolutely um, even though heaven is an instant earth is a sorcery sure earth costs two red uh x colorless heaven is one green x colorless i i'd be interested to see how many creatures with flying are gonna flood my board enough that i sure this is a sideboard for sure if okay. you're gonna play it at all is what I'm okay saying. now here's the question Got in to. limited would you i mean i think it's at its best in limited yes, would you agree i would say so um i think you you definitely take it yeah in limited if you can if um, you're in these colors and it, yeah. it is a bit of a commitment as you know you are mm-hmm. sort of in the two color range although that being said you don't necessarily have to commit to two colors you can just play this as a one of in yeah that's either true. a green deck or a red mm-hmm. deck i'm not saying you maybe should but that's something <laughs> right, you could right. think about yeah okay all right what you got my next card is glyph keeper glyph? three colorless oh. two blue for oh, a sphinx. five three sphinx okay very cool card. Flying. Whenever it enters, or I'm sorry, whenever it becomes a target of a spell or ability for the first time per turn, okay. I can counter that spell or ability. Okay. So it protects itself very well. It's also got Embalm for five and two blue. So okay. it has basically creature flashback is the way I like to think about Embalm. Yeah, Embalm is a really cool new... Very great mechanic. I think it's very interesting. Mm-hmm. So... Very cool card. Actually, really like this card. Yeah, Normally, these too. big sphinxes I would hold only as limited cards, right? Yes. Like, and I'm not saying this is going to see much constructed play, but it's good enough that it might see a bit. Um, you know, as a bomb in a control deck, I think it's got some I got think some so. legs. You know, with a a five three body in blue isn't anything to laugh at absolutely and it uh, it's for five mana for five power on the i mean that's not bad yeah it is this i that should say though to, uh bolt the first time there you uh, go i mean i should say that this pa- this set is fairly high powered yeah and just its stats and so this a five three for five isn't necessarily great in this set but it's mm-hmm. not bad either and it has flying it's got the evasion no, and a, it's got the protection that's a fourth of your life sitting on the absolutely board. you can't really let that go unblocked absolutely uh all right so next is harvest season one green two colorless search your library for up to x basic land cards where x is the number of tapped creatures you control put those cards onto the battlefield tap and shuffle your library i love it okay i love it perfect that is ramped to the max <laughs> um that really encourages aggressive play sure and then helps you get to your big guys sure right i so like that that I, that's pretty versatile um i don't know that's a first pick out of a pack but mm-hmm. honestly that's pretty strong. yeah it's pretty strong i would agree i think it's a great card love it all right my next my next pull is vizier of many faces it's two colorless and two blue. You may have Vizier of Many Faces enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except if it was embalmed, the token has no mana cost, it's white, and it's a zombie in addition to its other types, and it does have embalm for three and two blue. So it's a zero, okay. zero for four that gets to copy something. Mm-hmm. You can also embalm it and do it again, which I think is pretty great. Mm-hmm. I actually really like this card. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, uh... I mean, huh. copycat cards in general are usually pretty fun, right? Phantasmal yeah. Image is a great card. Uh, so, fantastic in cube. My only question here, it mm-hmm. says, and as copy of any creature on the battlefield, except if it was embalmed. And then if it's embalmed, it gets the white color and the zombie tag on. 
I see. You see? I get it now. It's okay. a great card. I really like this. I think it's cool to get two copies. Now Solid. it's not gonna it's not gonna see tons of play, I don't think. But no, for it four, is a very cool card. I mean, for fours it fours a bit much, I would say. I could see it if you have like with a god. Yeah. Gods are indestructible, so you need to have some kind of answer to it. You need your exile That's fair. effects. Mm -hmm. But also great if you could just copy that god. Yeah. And boom, you know, there's your mirror. There you go. Protects you. Absolutely. Um Okay. Next, Honored Hydra. I Ooh, love my Hydras. The Hydras. Uh, trample and Embalm. It is a uh, six cost for... Sorry, it's a six, six for six. Let me see okay. that. Uh, one green, five colorless. Um, embalm for four. Interesting. Right? Okay, so, so now we're seeing maybe a little bit of graveyard interaction. Maybe yeah. you want to get it there first. So that's um, perhaps... Uh, we could see some Jund. Maybe. Yeah, later in the set, maybe. Maybe. That'd be great. Everything, pretty much every color, however, has its kind of reanimator-ish yeah, things. Yeah, like I would say. Embalm changes the game a little bit, and then mm -hmm. everything can kind of play with this graveyard. Um, and it gives you some different... I mean, clearly, mm -hmm. you know, in Limited, this is a great bomb, right? I mean, it's I so. it's exactly what you want. A 6-6 six, yeah. six for 6 with Trample and Embalm yeah. that you can then play it again. So, I mean, it's great mm -hmm. in Limited. So, um, do you cast this then hard cast for six, and then just hope it dies somehow so you can bring it back? Or? Well, I think you can you can sort of go two ways with it. I think in a in a green ramp deck, you just mm -hmm. play it for six, Fair. and then play it again if you want to. Yeah. If you have a discard outlet of some kind, well, you can still run, and you're running green, then yeah. this is great, right? Like you can mm -hmm. still get a, get away with that, and you Solid. don't necessarily have to ramp as much. Solid. Okay. So, I. Big I pulled my card. I pulled the card I wanted as Beautiful. foretold. Beautiful. Um, as I said earlier, you get free stuff with it. It's a it's, great card. Oh, it's delicious. I think it'll be a lot of fun to play with. I'm oh, excited 100%. to play with it, especially in cube. I really think this will be at its best in cube, Heck but yes. we'll see. Um, so, I, I mean, I win is yeah, basically what it amounts much. to. Pretty much. I don't so, uh, I guess I gotta take a pie to the face or something. Yeah. Um, so, I'm looking at two more cards, two more rares. Uh, Liliana's Mastery. Two black, three colorless. Zombies you control get plus one, plus one. When Liliana's Mastery enters the battlefield, create two, two, two black zombie creature tokens. It's an enchantment. It's a great card. Huh. I love this card. It, yeah. It's it's really exactly what you want, right? Like, it creates bodies. Huh. It pumps them. And yeah. in a set where Embalm is such a huge mechanic, and everything is a zombie. Everything's going to get that buff. Yeah. yeah. That's tough. It's a great, great card, You can see I it think. in a lot of color combinations. Um, yeah. Okay, and then the next one, uh, one green, one colorless. Oh, God. It's a uh, three, four for two. That confused me. I thought I had that wrong. Uh, when <laughs> It's Channeler Initiate. When it enters the battlefield, put three minus one, minus one counters on target creature you control. Remove a minus one, minus one counter from Channeler Initiate and add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So essentially for two, you add a zero, one mana dork okay. for three turns. Yeah, it looks like. Well, and it's and worth then, noting also here. Yeah. If I may. Sure. The green black mechanic is with these sort of negative one negative one counters. Okay. That's sort of how the the Golgari sort of faction is going to is going to run in this set. So, yeah. there are ways to manipulate this where you can sort of play with those 1/1 one, one counters in different ways. Okay. Um, but a great card actually. I love I like this it. card. I like it's, it a lot. It's great. Um, at its I say at its worst, simply it is a Three four body yep. that you got for two one turn. Yeah. Um that can sneak up and kind of just help you out. Yeah. Eventually. Absolutely. Um, and I mean it's ramp, right? Yeah. Ramp is always great. It's always gonna be good. People um, there's always gonna be people playing ramp. Absolutely. Uh, so let me finish out my last two cards sure. since we've got them here. Uh my first one I got is Never and Return. It's an aftermath card. The Never is one and two black. Just story target creature, planeswalker. Sorcery speed. <laughs> Pretty great, Hard to, right? It's, like it's a murder with planeswalkers. Exactly, so. it's great. So yeah. with aftermath, I can pay three and one black, uh, exile target card from a graveyard and create a two-two black zombie creature token. Less excited about that side, uh, right? Yeah. Like, it's it's fine. Is that it rare? It is it rare. Huh. I think well. what you play this for mm -hmm. is in a black control deck. You play it as a removal spell, and then if you have nothing late game. You, you can at least get a body out, right? Yeah. Like, that's sort of the the payoff there. It's not necessarily going to end the game, but it's it's great it removal. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I mean, and Murder Saw Main Deck play, so... Absolutely. I mean, it's a, it's a never, good removal spell. Is it spell. instant speed? It is not. It is its sorcery. Um, so that, that hurts it. makes it a little worse. It hurts it a yeah. bit, for sure. But not terrible. No. Um, my, my last card is actually one of my favorite green creatures in this set. Okay. Prowling Serpopard? Serpopard. Ex- Hard. Let let's make sure. <laughs> wizards, can I friendly uh wizards, we need to sit down for a second. <laughs> can what is a cat snake? <laughs> it is a great card. It is four three, one and two green. You get a four three creature. Mm-hmm. Again, bring that power level yeah. into into play here. Very it oh cannot be countered. And I just read its next line. Creature spells you control can't be countered. How great is that? Buddy. In a mid range green deck. Oh my god. Beautiful. Right? Like, this is perfect. I think this could see play outside of standard. I think so. It's going to be great. It's not legendary. You can run multiples of this. And so you're going to get this effect. How? That's perfect. That is a very, very strong card. A very good card. I love this card. So, very excited to pull that. I won. I got my ass foretold. Oh, absolutely. I, tip of the hat, bag of the whatever to you. (laughs) You got some more packs to open. Next no. time we go. Oh yeah, you're next right. Next time on our next episode, he's we gotta we gotta pull your in the head. We'll see. I might. Uh, I gotta pick a new card. Yeah, let's see. There's plenty of great stuff. There are, and um, we'll we'll figure that out in the next episode. We'll have definitely. a new card for me. You'll continue yeah. your reign. And we'll. I'll find my Minotaur. You'll find Gosh, it eventually. Darn it. It's gonna be great. So, <laughs> great episode. Great first episode. Fun. Uh, Very fun. Yeah, I think so. Uh, dipping our toes in. Absolutely. Um, it was good, buddy. It was good. Well, job well done. So. Job well done. Just well, perfect. Just shake, For those of you who d- didn't see that, which is all of you, we just shook <laughs> hands. Users. It's going to be great. So oh. we really appreciate you guys sticking mm-hmm. around, hopefully listening and enjoying what we have to offer. We yeah. think this will be a great venture. Um, and we'll be back at some point. We don't have a, a specific schedule yet. Is nope. that fair? We sure don't. Life is weird. Magic is weirder. <laughs> so we have to make it work. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, it, it is something that we like to stretch our brain muscles right. around, think about this game a little bit more, uh, and just do it together. Yeah. Find people out there who want to know more about Absolutely. So little game we play. Join in with us, hang out with us. Hopefully we'll get up into a live stream situation at some point hey, so you guys hey. can interact as we do this. That'd be loads of fun. Um, I think next week we've got some new little segments coming out and all this yeah. stuff or whenever we release the next episode. Definitely. So Ooh, it'll oh, be a lot of fun. Of course. And there are some tournaments happening soon. Oh, absolutely. Uh, limited tournaments for this set right here. I'm on cat. Um, Most notably, I think, is Grand Prix Richmond. Yeah, that's probably the one I'll follow the closest. Absolutely. So we encourage everybody to go out, check that out. It's going to be a great tournament. I know we will be checking it out. I'll have some things to say. Um, and if there if there's some really crazy stuff happening, we'll probably talk about it. I think in the next yes. next episode. So absolutely. Uh, with that, you guys uh, have a great whatever. Have a great whatever. <laughs> a perfect sign off. <laughs> a perfect sign off. We do thank you guys for joining us with it resolves, and uh, we'll see you next time. Adios.